What's up everybody, welcome to another episode here at Trouble Delicious. Today, we were supposed to be at the Western Warehouse, but some uh, double booking happened, so we're at Danny's place. We're going to be doing a lot of installs today. The Gladiator just got its new wheels, so you can see it. There they are. I posted a couple pictures up on Instagram, but as it stands now, they look absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's the RT from Falcon in a 38, and then obviously the fitted Paldi's on there. <clears throat> if you guys do have any questions about my rim and tire package, I'll let you guys know. So just comment below or send me a DM or whatever. And we'll hook that up but that's what they look like but today we're going to be doing a couple unboxings and a couple installs so we got some metal cloak extended brake lines for the rear um we do have the power gen 500 from type s i know i talked about it briefly um, on the last video that we we were you know when we were breaking down and getting ready for the rubicon so today is wednesday we are leaving to rubicon on saturday so we're just kind of finishing up the last few things before we hit the road um, we're also going to relocate the resis up front with these brackets put a set of rock lights on we have a dash cam that i'll do an unboxing also so it's gonna be a little bit of everything and then we're finally gonna throw in the yukon shaft we did have a mishap with these but they were installed incorrectly so we had to go get them all recut repressed um, but everything is is good there uh shout out to gus from all terrain he he went ahead and fixed all that for us but the truck itself is sitting pretty right now we did an oil change everything is taken care of on the engine compartment but again we're doing rear shafts and then doing some unboxings so stick around it's gonna be a cool episode just because you guys get to see a ton of stuff all in one episode usually people break this all down in individual episodes but today we're gonna give you a bum bum rush of like information and things that we're doing and it's only because again we're getting ready for the rubicon and we're gonna be using all these things there stick around it's gonna be a fun one danny's over there getting ready uh we're gonna start taking the rear end off and um let's get it popping all right team so as we disassemble this thing i just wanted to show you some uh key points here you do have to take the brake caliper off so I'll make sure you grab that and hang it up to the side my exhaust actually sat, sat perfect like a table so we were able to just kind of put it to the side one big thing is this little torx right here Got to be really, really careful because if you strip that, you're going to have to drill that out and it's going to be, you know, more of a headache than you have to find a new one or whatever. Once you take that off, this rotor will pop out. Uh, one more thing that you want to be very, very careful of not to damage, it's the ABS sensor. So the ABS sensor hooks up to right there. It's an eight and then you just pull it out and you just kind of give it a nice little tug and it pops right out. Um, if you want to look at like a more in-depth removal of all this, you can. I'm sure there's a bunch of them. How do you replace your axles? I just wanted to show you a couple key points and then uh, we're going to put the other shafts in. I'll show you the difference between both of them before uh, we put them in and then uh, we'll move on let's get it all right team so all the bolts are off there's uh four back here total of eight bolts that you had to get to remove from the back side that's including the brake the brake rotor and the calipers and everything um i do recommend you guys putting this back in so that way you can pull the axle out because it is still in the actual ring and pinion and everything so you need a little bit of pressure to get it on so you just put your rotor back on and it gives you like a nice leverage to pull so we're going to continue the time lapse let's get it All right, team, so the shaft is out. So one thing that you do have to worry about when you're pulling the shaft is you gotta make sure you pull it nice and slow and you pull that out evenly. You don't wanna like twist it and drop it down while you're pulling from the ring because you might damage it on the inside. We did find out though that my stop one was twisted just a little bit right there. If you can look at it, slow it down, it does have a slight like curvature. Um, so it does have a little bit of a twist. So this is actually good that we're swapping them out. Um, this is a lot stronger. It's a lot beefier and it is chromoly and you can see, pretty much see the difference. Um, my other side is leaking. So that seal is already messed up too. It came in perfect time. So these are the Yukon shafts for the Gladiator JT in a chromoly and uh, they're both the same spline count. Obviously the strength difference is, is, is going to be huge. Um, those are chromoly a lot stronger. Even the bearings, everything looks a lot nicer. So we're going to put the one back in and then uh, reassemble this side and get the other side popping. Let's go. Alrighty team, so we're knee deep in this uh, this job here. We didn't have the right tools to completely press in the studs, so we had to do a little bit of Mexican engineering to make it work. But we got the studs in, everything is correct there. We also uh, swapped out the brake lines, so we went with the metal cloak extended steel braided and rubberized uh, brake lines for the rear. Um, I was noticing that at full flex, I was kind of stretching out my stock ones. The stock one, I'll show you what it looks like on this side. Um, so we decided to move it and uh, get a get a metal cloak set. So the metal cloak set's a little bit longer. I'll show you the comparison between the stock one and the metal cloak one. So the metal cloak one's there, the stock one's here. It's a few inches longer, maybe like I don't know, maybe six inches longer. But it's a really nice piece, and uh, yeah, we just put that on. So we're gonna finish this side and then move on to the other side and knock it out. The sun is shifting on us, so it's perfect. We're gonna get to the other side, and knock it out. Alrighty team, I did want to show you something different. So on this side, like I mentioned earlier, it was leaking. So you can see the collection of dirt. Usually, if you're in an off-road rig and you're wheeling it a lot, if you do have a leak somewhere, that's kind of the telltale sign. It'll start collecting dirt. Yeah, my seal broke and you can see the dirt collecting. Was it major? 
but it was big enough where we noticed it um, good thing is we were ready to upgrade anyways so now with the new axle the new seal it was just the axle seal it'll go ahead and seal that up and it'll be nice and nice and neat after we take it off we'll clean the area and then uh, put the new axle in and make sure it seats correctly Alrighty, so we just removed the rotor and you can see where the leak has caused like all this mess and you can smell the gear oil So it's pretty gross. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean this up degrease it all kind of clean it And then uh, we'll put the new shaft in but there you go You can see it little leak there and you can tell what oil it is because you can smell it gear oil has a very distinctive smell but There it is Alrighty team, so we moved on to the second side and wrapped it all up. Same process, eight bolts in the back, remove the caliper, put in your shaft. It was all messy, we cleaned it all up. We are gonna still kinda power wash the back of this a little bit just so we can see if there is any other leaking, but we should be okay. And then we also replaced the lines on here with the metal cloak ones. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, pressurize the brake system still. And then we'll put on um, the big daddies back on. And then we're gonna start doing the next piece of this whole thing. So we'll probably relocate the resis next because it's probably one of the easier moves. And then we'll start wiring the 12 volt to the back. It's pretty much all wired and done. Like you guys seen in the last episode with Kurt, he mailed me that bracket, but I do have it all completed and loomed. Yeah, that's gonna be the next thing we do, man. But stick around, we're gonna continue to do this and then we'll do the unboxings for these things. And uh, we'll show you what, what's the goods in there. Let's get it. Alrighty, so the next step is installing this bad boy. So I did buy this on Amazon, but I did re-loom it, put some better wire and all that good stuff. So I did um, build this with Kurt. If you guys saw my last video, we um, we made this bracket and made this work all together. And then we made it work with this stock location where the Gladiator has a hole already. If you don't have the 12 volt in the back, you can buy a setup like this. You just have to make it a little bit better. I think the wire that they give you is pretty cheap. And if you run power at it all times, it might heat up and you know burn down your truck and whatnot. So we loomed it all up nice and neat. So we're gonna plug it in. And then I do have a third battery underneath here under a skid plate. So I'll show you what that looks like. It is an Optima. So we're gonna run this, run it hot at all times. So that way when we put the fridge back here during the Rubicon, it never shuts off on us. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let's get it. Alrighty team, so the next step is to run and pipe all the wire. So what we did is kind of run it in between the frame right here, all the way up, all the way around. And then my secondary battery is right there. You can see it right there. That's basically just a battery for accessories. It's full power all the time. It gets powered by the first primary battery up there. And then obviously you have the start stop battery too, but that's the one that goes there. That's a red top. Everything is piped and loomed correctly. Get it all out of the way, waterproof. So we're gonna put these wires in and I'll tuck them in and tape them up and make sure that they're safe and out of the way. And then uh, we'll wrap up this project and move on to the next one. So stick around, let's get it. All right, James, so we just finished wiring that little uh, 12 volt. So if you look back here, it gives you a reading and everything. So it's running hot at all times, but I am gonna regulate that to a switch where I can turn this on. Um, once I get all the ghost box and everything else wired in, that's what we'll do. But everything's tucked in, loomed, waterproofed and um, you know, just for safety reasons, because we are going to be using it for power all the time. Uh, I want to make sure we don't burn the truck down. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, now we're moving on to the next task at hand is these redsies. So my reservoirs here, Danny's working on it now. We're rubbing on the tire here. Um, I've had this problem probably since I've had this truck. This uh, bracket wasn't the right one. So as you can see, those things upside down. But it's what they had at the moment. So I put it on and it's, it worked for the most part. But at full tuck, full full articulation it does touch so we're just going to shift it over and move it over a couple inches it should be should be better off what we're going to use instead of that bracket radflow had a, a bracket system that i used on the bronco and i really like it so i went and bought some from them they look like that and then they use uh just some regular um clamps so that's what we're going to do to relocate it a little bit and give us more clearance so that way when we are full drooping at the rubicon and doesn't get bound up and it doesn't break that the reservoir or the mount so yep danny's on it right now I'll show you what it looks like once we relocate it but stick around hopefully you guys are enjoying this episode i know it's like one of those all over the place episodes but this is part of what it takes to take a big uh, big trip you do have to prep your truck make sure it's ready and then uh we'll show you what we're carrying too um i'll show you what i loaded up i am going to be doing the recovery stuff and then the group's going to be taking like the jack some of the food and whatnot but um stick around we'll show you what it looks like when it's done Alrighty team, so we're continuing to finish uh, relocating these resins. I just wanted to show you what the reservoirs look like. So this was the original bracket. Pretty nice bracket, a little overbuilt, but it did stick out 
like two or three inches more um, just because of the way the bracket is made and when I got these brackets uh, these shocks had barely been released for the gladiator and they weren't sure if they were gonna fit correctly so they probably fixed them by now but there's the new setup it's a lot more tucked in and it just like sits better so um, that bracket itself we drilled the hole right through the center and then uh, mounted it to one of the factory locations and we put the reservoir on it and it honestly just kind of like pushed it in now where my tire is rubbing I, it won't rub at all or it'll barely snip it versus um completely rubbing it off completely versus completely rubbing it off how you see there big difference again simple fixes like that uh will keep you out of trouble when you are flexing and climbing up big boulders and whatnot we're gonna put the other side on and then uh we'll continue it on let's get it what's up guys so we finished up with danny yesterday it got really really hot all the cameras were dying on us so we decided to kind of just finish what we were doing finished up the resis cleaned up everything went to have some lunch and then we refilled the diffs did all those minor things um, but i did promise some unboxings we are back home and uh, we're getting ready for the rubicon we're about a day and a half from heading out so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give you guys a quick unboxing show you what the items that uh, i'm gonna be taking to rubicon look like and then uh, we'll head out but just a quick, quick recap we completely removed the shafts a couple of them were twisted we installed installed the 12 volt in the back and you can see the reader still on because it is hot at all times and then we did the rear shafts and all that good stuff i'm gonna do the unboxing on that power gen on our dash cam and on the solar panels that they gave me because we're gonna bring all that to the rubicon and we're gonna use it we have been testing some of that stuff already out here at home um it does charge it really well which is twice the size of the ones i was using before it's been working really really well and you can stack them so it's pretty cool i'm gonna bring both of them out and show you a couple examples and then uh the dash cam i've never had a dash cam but i know they're really useful especially when you get into accidents and whatnot um josh has one on his rig already we tested some of the features and it's really really nice but i'm just gonna go a quick unboxing and then later in the future we'll do an actual review on it completely but they're all from type s so shout out to jared from project x he uh ended up hooking us up he knew we would need something like this for the rubicon so we're gonna test it um but yeah stick around we're gonna go get a knife and we're gonna unbox these things all right team so the first thing i'm gonna open up is the type s power gen 500 so this is a lithium generator it is a battery charger emergency backup all that good stuff we actually have one opened already that i've been testing it works really well and it's really cool because it does have a compartment where you kind of store everything so you don't lose it so that's really neat a lot of battery packs don't have that i haven't really researched a ton of them so don't take my word for it but all I know is that one's been working really well. I'm gonna show you what it comes with in the box when we open it. Uh, excuse the noise too, the traffic, we're at the house, so it's a little loud, but we're running out of time, so I wanted to make sure I brought out the video for you guys. All this stuff is usually packaged really nice because it is battery, so when they're shipping it, shipping it, they have all kinds of requirements, uh, but we unboxing it. Obviously, you get your cord, so you do get a, a 12 volt. You do get a battery starter too. You can use it if your car does die out on you. So if you do carry it with you when you're overlanding, it's perfect. And then it does have a DC charger also. So you can plug it into like a home outlet. It's really, really nice. Um, and then that's it. That's really all it comes with, some protective stuff. And then it comes with the actual unit. So we're actually taking both units with us. It has both sides. This side has, has all the DC. And then you can use your 12 volt like cigarette lighter plug right there. And then on the opposite side, it gives you USBs, fast charging. USB-C's, which I'll show you on this one. So you'll get a blue light when it's on, and then you flip it around, and it'll actually give you all the ratings, how many hours, depending on what you have charging, um, what's the output, what, everything else that's pretty much connected to it. And then you could also change the modes and everything that uh, you're doing. So it's really, really useful. It does have some weight. And another cool thing is, like if you are using it to uh, power your house, you can stack these and they stack right, right against each other and they're really, really nice. So you can plug them together and then just give everything power. Again, very, very useful. We are gonna use them more as a camping tool. I did run 12 volt to the back of the truck. I'm hoping that I won't have to use them. We'll use these more for like cell phones, batteries and those kind of things. But yeah, we're gonna take them out. They are from Type S again, it's the Power Gen 500. And they also do come with uh, solar panels if you do decide to get some. So I'll show you uh, what, what those look like here shortly. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna open up is the actual portable solar panel. These are uh, like an addition to the battery pack if you do wanna buy them. So if you're off the grid quite a bit, they actually work really well. We took one out and uh, just kind of put it on the yard, not even really like pointing it at the sun to see if it would help. So we put the battery out and I think within like three hours, it had like 35% charge. So as long as you point them correctly, I think you can get a full battery charge relatively quick. They do have um, a few panels, so they come in a really nice package. They have some weight to them too. I had some before with a different brand and um, they weren't as nice. So these Type S ones are definitely a lot prettier than the ones I had before, but you open it up and it does come protected obviously and these are four panels so the one that i had before was only three so this is a bigger panel and it also comes with little kickstands 
So if you're setting it up somewhere, you put these out and it works out of kickstand. So all the wires and everything are tucked in correctly and um, they all work with your actual power bank that uh, they carry. And they should honestly power pretty much any other battery pack as long as you have a plug for it and they're uh, compatible with solar panels. They don't really come with anything else. You just plug them into the battery pack and that's it. You point them at the sun and they work. But yeah, if you're looking for a solution for a battery or some uh, solar panels you want to try out, Try these type of ones, man. They work really well. I know there's a lot of choices out there. We're gonna test these out a little bit more during the Rubicon, and then uh, we'll give you some feedback afterwards. Alrighty, so last but not least, this is a dash cam. So again, if you travel a lot and move around, you should definitely have a dash cam just for safety. They actually record when your car is off, when you have it in a parking spot. You can actually record yourself. So if you need to get content where it's facing you, this camera does have both visuals, so you can point it up forward and it points backward. Um, it also helps you, like if there's an accident, something happens in front of you, it actually Actually records the whole time so as soon as you turn on your truck the dash cam um, go ahead it goes it goes into record mode it has its own modes and you can kind of set it up all accordingly we have been testing it at Josh's car but this is pretty small and you'll see how it looks it has a camera up front and then does have the camera on the side it catches audio catches pretty much everything you do you can set it to time if you don't want it to be um, in the video the whole time also you can do a bunch of features I'm not gonna show you all of that just yet I just wanted to unbox it and show you what show you what it looks like um, there's a ton of dash cams out there this one is by type s and this one's relatively easy to install also um, part of the accessories it's just a sticky pad you put it on your window it's the 3m sticky pad you know like gopros and everything used and then it comes with a wire you just plug it into your 12 volt cigarette lighter and that's it you turn it on set it time all those things like normal appliances or anything electronic it's ready to record it comes with a memory card and everything that you need uh, let me see if i can plug this in so the actual camera itself looks just like that and then you just put it on your window the usb is on the side and then you just plug it into your cigarette lighter and it, and it comes on so we're gonna go plug it in and we'll show you what the screens look like real quick um and then we'll give you more feedback as soon as we start using them i've never used a dash cam we'll, we'll see what's up but this type s one is pretty nice simple to use and again you don't have to run any wires anywhere crazy and it has a bunch of modes all right because we just wired toggle in the back so i don't have to go in the dash itself right now i'm gonna plug it in back here and test our little plug okay just plug it in nice and easy and then we're gonna plug to power the camera just so we can see what it looks like when we turn it on so there it is the type s is coming on and right away the camera comes on so it'll be recording forward and backward at the same time so you can kind of set up all the modes power stop all the features and whatnot um but it starts recording right away as soon as you give it power so it's really really cool there it is and it is a 4k hd camera so it's going to record real crisp um, content again it's really useful if there's an accident um if you want to do some voiceovers or record while you're sitting in the car it just catches everything if you have a dash cam obviously you guys know what's up um but it's another tool that we're going to use to get you a bit better there's another tool we're going to use to get you guys better content so shout out to jared again from type s we're going to test everything and then we'll give you guys a review and feedback on how everything worked after the rubicon but yeah so we're going to clean up here and then i'll close you guys out thank you for sticking around all right team so that'll do it here um on this episode so again quick recap we did the unboxing installed rear shafts brake lines re uh located some resis the gladiator is pretty much ready where it's going to be um if you guys seen the last video we did the rack cut we did install the tire up above but we did get new fitted poly actual bead locks and then we are going to be running the rts all the way out there um i didn't get to re-gear it there's still a re-gear in the near future and there's uh more power coming to it and you guys will know as soon as we get to that point uh the only other thing that i might be switching out is those rear links in the back i do have them bent so i'm either going to hammer them in to get them straightened out or i will just remove it once once we get to the rubicon because this baby does sway on the freeway if you do have uh, no sway bars at all i don't have front ones which i just completely stopped using i'm probably going to delete that whole system but the gladiator as it sits is ready for the rubicon it should do pretty much anything i throw at it and um, it just looks good man it looks good on the polished wheels uh, shout out to falcon fitty paul to everybody that's helped me with this build um, obviously west and super winch they've been around with me since the beginning and uh, it just looks good man so if you guys are looking for a winch obviously shop west End and super winch and uh, bumpers and all that is still still kept up still looks good and um yeah hopefully you guys are enjoying it project x lights will light the light the way if we do get caught at night and uh we'll be rocking the blizzard box we'll be doing all that good stuff plenty of content from the rubicon will come up after we get back enjoy this episode uh hopefully you guys have seen all the past episodes if not go back check them out run what you brung continues if you haven't joined one of our wednesday link ups on instagram 
we do a drink and chill 7 p.m come and join us every time we get to 100 i give something away so it's really really fun um we just talk about upcoming trails upcoming videos some of the stuff that's going on in the industry and we have a really good time so thank you again for all the support we're still chasing 10k so keep sharing this video keep sharing the brand and uh, i'm gonna continue to bring you some heat so um the wagoneer is still back there we still gotta get that done up and then obviously we have the Bronco that is uh, needing of a wrap and some other goodies. We were hoping to get some RTR two-door fenders, but for some reason they were sold out in like two minutes. Unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, secure some of those. So if anybody knows somebody at RTR, Lauren Healy, Vaughn, tell them to hook a boy up. I'll pay for them. I just need them, you know? Let us grab a set so we can put them on. But Gladiator is set, Rubicon is upcoming. Um, appreciate you guys, wish us luck, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks.